Hi everyone, hope all of you are doing good. So today our discussion is on meshing, meshing the element like plates. So most of you have used the plate mesh in your project, but we often receive the questions like why meshing is required and what is the philosophy behind this. So today we will try to quickly understand what exactly is meshing and why it is needed. Now to understand meshing, you need to understand a little bit of its background. So if you take any structural element, it can be represented by a differential equation. Now the differential equation is the backbone here and it is just like representing the natural behavior of the physical environment around us. So be it statistics, be it engineering, physics, chemistry, economics and finance, biology, and many other fields. Everywhere you can see the differential equation. So basically it represents the behavior of the nature. So in engineering too, its application is very widespread, right from the field like thermodynamics, electromagnetism, to the structural analysis. And in the structural analysis, the structural behavior is represented by the differential equation where the theory of elasticity is very vital and the solution of this differential equation represents the structural response now let's take a very simple example on the bar problem like this so this problem can be represented by the differential equation as you can see here and if one can analytically solve this, he can get some algebraic relationship by which the response like displacement and the stress can be determined exactly at any location of choice. Uh, because here you are getting the exact solution. But these type of differential equations are not easy to solve as it's very difficult in such case or almost impossible to isolate the variable in the integral form which is required for solving the differential equation and that too if we take a little bit of advanced and complex shape like plates or solid then it's almost impossible to even form the differential equation for the entire domain so in such kind of element like solid and plate we fragment them into small pieces where we create the differential equation so it's important to make some equivalent statement of that differential equation form into a integral form which we also known as the weaker transformation so that is known as the weak form now the weak form directly represents the integral form which is much easier to solve because it's an integral from the variables are isolated. You can directly solve them. However, there is a detailed mathematical procedure to deduce this weak form from the actual differential equation form by the methods like weighted residual method. Now, we will talk on this chapter in a separate video. That's a very interesting topic. But just to give you some idea like the weak form is not the exact form but it's an equivalent form and it's an approximate form derived from the actual differential form by minimizing the error or the deviation in between the result of these two forms. So in the weak form, the assumption is made that the boundary condition is to be satisfied and this weak form is not as smooth as the strong form. The smooth means it's a natural condition or natural function where you can differentiate up to infinite number of times. But the weak form is not as smooth. So the difference between the displacement response at any node calculated from the strong form and the weak form is thus minimized as much as possible. It's not the exact but it's approximate. So in other words, we have enforced the displacement compatibility at the nodes. So basically the displacement is calculated at the nodes and the displacement calculated at some intermediate location in between the nodes 
is represented by some assumed shape function. Uh, shape function is nothing but a assumed polynomial function. Here instead it is a linear function. So the displacement at the intermediate location is just an interpolated value uh, that we have calculated at the two extreme nodes. So more we create the intermediate nodes, more we have the opportunity for the program to calculate the displacement at those nodes, that means at the inner region, and thereby representing the response shape closer to the exact and the real shape. And that is the main principle behind the finite element procedure. So the result of the finite element procedure is approximate, but not exact. But finer the mesh you generate, better the result we can expect. So in case of stable equilibrium, the result tends to converge. But also you need to remember that you need to strike some balance in between the mesh density and the accuracy. So higher the density, heavier would be your model. Model would be too huge. And uh, it will entail an enormous amount of time and computer resource to solve the stiffness matrix. So just check the result in between the consecutive mesh and if the result is converging and if the result is within some allowable range, then you can stop generating some further mesh. So let's take a small STAD example and see why mesh is important and how it can provide us some better result. Okay, now we have uh, taken a simple table structure. Uh, this is uh, the table structure with uh, columns, four columns and surrounding beams and there is a slab. Now, right now, let me show the rendered view. This is a plate element uh, which is surrounded by uh, four beams. Now we are going to apply some loading. Uh, here we have already used the sulfate as a loading. So now we are going to perform the analysis of this and see the displacement response. So we are just going to perform the normal linear static analysis. Okay, now here we are going to see how the displacement shape looks like and how is the stress distribution. So displacement tab is already switched on. I'm just uh, scaling up this displacement view. Now here you can see the entire table is going down. It's not table exactly. The top part of the slab is going down. There is no intermediate uh, bending that you can see here as if it's a stiff solid uh, element which is having some infinite rigidity and it is just displace, uh, displacing downward. So we can't see any internal uh, deformation, internal deflection profile, nothing. And even if I see the stress, for example, I'm going to see the out of plane bending moment there is no variation in stress. You can see in this stress contour, it's completely straight. So basically, I'm not going to get any kind of internal deformation. I don't have any idea like how it is going to behave internally, how would be its displacement shape, how would be the stress distribution, nothing. All I can get is all the four corner displacement because the displacement has been calculated at the available node by the finite element method that I have explained. So as there is no internal node, so there is no displacement calculated inside and the entire profile, this displacement profile, for example, like this, it has been linearly connected. Okay, now, now let's perform some meshing of the existing plate element. I'm going to do it by 10 by 10. 
Now you can see a lot of internal nodes are created because the domain has been split. The element has been subdivided into smaller units. So let's see the displacement this time. So the displacement looks quite decent and it looks very realistic you can see it is just showing some deformed profile of the shape of this uh, plate element so it is having some well-defined deflection profile and if we see the plate stress here Here you can see, we can see some variation in the stress distribution. So the reason being here we have a lot of internal nodes uh, where program has got the opportunity to calculate the displacement and all the internal portion are just joined by some plane or the straight line which is the shape function here and it is basically also known as the interpolation and thus you can get some displaced profile. Now, at this point, you can further go ahead meshing the existing plate element. More the mesh you do, uh, the finer you can expect the result. But it's not like that you can keep on going on and on and on. Uh, you may want to see the displacement result of any node of your concern. And you subdivide this plate element further and also see the displacement result. Now, compare the difference between the first two or three consecutive set of finite element divisions and its result. If the result is not deviating too much and it is seemingly converging to some values and this difference is within your allowable range, for example, 1% or 2%, then you can stop further meshing because more you generate the mesh, more the nodes would be calculated and heavier would be your model and it will unnecessarily consuming your analysis runtime. So hope you understood uh, what is the reason we have to generate the meshing in our plate elements and how it can deliver us some more realistic finite element result so that we can use those results for our real life structural analysis calculation and do further design.